So, what do you plan on doing with that old pool table in the basement? This is a question most owners of antique tables should ask themselves, but don't. There are literally hundreds of thousands of old pool, snooker, and billiard tables made prior to 1960 in varying conditions across this globe. A lot of them are in use in pool halls, private homes, and clubs. However, many forlornly rot away in basements and attics, decaying into shadows of their former splendor. Without proper intervention and restoration, they can, and many times do, degrade to the point where no amount of work will salvage them. As a history buff and restorer, that last statement cuts me to the heart. Let's consider for a moment the influence the games collectively known as billiards have had on history. Mary, Queen of Scots, was buried in the cloth from her billiard table. Thomas Jefferson had a billiard table installed in the room under the dome of the Monticello. Morgan Earp was shot while playing pool in the town of Tombstone. The use of elephant ivory in the production of billiard balls is the main reason for the diminished elephant population in Africa to this very day. And Vladimir Putin took breaks in his billiard room in Russia during the Cold War Arms Treaty as recently as October of 2007. These are just a few of the examples, but the list goes on. Now, I doubt that old relic of a table that you have was one, the one Morgan Earp was playing on when he was shot, but surely the table you have could tell a mountain of its own stories. Your great-grandfather purchased the table new back in the early 1920s. It was passed on through your previous generations, and now you've ended up with it. Or maybe your friend is the one in a similar situation. But he's not a billiard enthusiast like you, so you convince him to sell it to you. Half the veneer is missing and, or peeling up. It has strange looking bolts holding the rails on and you can't loosen them. The nameplate has long since vanished along with the sights and the nearby washing machine has repeatedly overflowed and partially rotted the table's cabriolet legs. What should you do now? Well, first and most imperatively, don't move it yourself. You know, this goes down as the number one reason as to why more of these tables didn't survive to the present. Slate is about as brittle as glass, and the only thing holding the frame of the table to the slates are a handful of medium-sized wood screws. Those screws aren't meant to be pulled up on. So recruiting eight of your buddies so that everyone takes a piece of the action should never enter your mind as an option. Call a professional. As I tell my customers, there's a reason why we get paid to do what we do. Let's say you bought an antique table that's in pretty good condition. What next? Ask a lot of questions. You know, I'm more than willing to spend 30 minutes or more in telephone conversations explaining the intricacies of antique tables to my customers. My customers have come to me for guidance and expertise, so they ask a lot of me. And most of the time, I provide them with information they didn't even consider. But if there's a question I don't know the answer to, I will take the time to look up the answer either with them on the phone with me or I do the research and I get back with them. Your technician should be willing to do the same. You should be also be aware of misinformation because there's a lot of it out there. And, you should, and should you receive conflicting information? Before doing anything based on that conflicting information that may harm the table's value or its ability to function properly, resolve that conflict. You should decide on the most logical and consistent explanation that resolves that conflicting information. And you should also realize that some information just simply won't be available, like the exact manufacturing dates of specific brands or models of tables, the number of tables made of that model, the number of tables made in a specific species of wood. Your technician should know the basics involved with an antique table. If he says he's never seen a table with bolts that have three holes, run. If he says he's never seen a table with a four-piece slate, you may, want to, you may want to find somebody else. You know, he should know the difference between a number three and a number six iron, and what to do should there be something wrong with the ones you have. No industry standard on pockets existed prior to the 1930s, and the pockets you have on your table are specific to your table. 
So if he suggests wholesale replacement with modern pockets, politely show him the door. Once you find a qualified technician, this professional should be able to restore your table to its former glory. Now that we've made it this far, what are your options? You've acquired the table, what do you do next? Who should do the work? Most technicians should be able to perform the next two operations. However, most don't do refinishing, touch-ups, and fewer do restorations. Oh, and conservation work on tables? That's almost unheard of. Some furniture restoration companies will tackle the cabinetry of a pool table, but they usually won't move or recover them. So in most instances, the customer must find at least two different contractors for one pool table. And first, you need to figure out exactly what your expectations are compared to the limitations of each type of service. Let's say you only want to have your pool table moved. Well, this is the least expensive way to go. The table itself won't be any better off than it was before it was moved. The wood will continue to degrade and there will be no increase in value for that table. Let's say you want to bump up the service a notch and have it moved, recovered, and have new rubber installed. The table will play better and it's, it's still relatively inexpensive, but again, the cabinetry of the table is still no better off. And you'll only have marginally increased uh, table value. Maybe you opt for having the table touched up. Now the minor scratches and dings are less obvious and you haven't spent a ton of money and the table is now worth yeah, slightly more. But you still haven't addressed the major problem, which is getting it structurally sound and looking like new. Well, this is where restoration comes in. When a good restoration is done, the table is structurally sound and looks and plays like new, and you've increased the value of that table tremendously. The only drawback is finding a qualified restorer and coming up with the money to do it right. Finally, let's talk about conservation. Conservation work is generally reserved for museums. A conservatist, conservativist's job is to conserve what's there. They will basically lock the state of the table in this moment in time, and they're not typically going to bring it back to its previous state. So why should you get your table restored? Now, most of us have seen that show on TV, Antique Something or Other, their experts would have you believe that any and all repair or restoration devalues a piece. Well, you know what? This simply isn't the case. A well-documented and well-executed restoration will always increase the value of case goods where the original finish or structure is in less than good condition. Most all tables made prior to World War II can sell for over $15,000, and a fully restored Brunswick Improved Union League can sell for anywhere between twenty-five and forty-five thousand dollars. You know, I've personally worked on tables made prior to eighteen fifty that sold for over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, they get that expensive. Recently, while researching a table, I came across a post on an online classified website. The ad featured a neglected Brunswick Rochester with a Chicago-style ball return that, fully restored, was worth somewhere between eighteen and twenty thousand dollars. The entire table was veneered in mahogany. However, someone broke the ball return and roaches ate away the original lacquer finish. The veneer was peeling, the rails were heavily gouged, and the ivory sights were missing. Does that sound familiar? The table was originally listed for $500. Two weeks went by, the same table was listed again. Now it was $250. Another two weeks went by and finally the owner dropped his price to 150 and someone bought it. Do you want to be the guy selling that table? If you were the one buying it, what would you do with it? Would you doom the pool table to a life as a glorified, beat-up laundry table? Or would you restore it to its former beauty and make it the centerpiece of your home? You know, a pool table is more than just recreational equipment. It's one of the few things that provide a common ground for the aristocrat and the average man. For me, there's nothing better than seeing my customer's face light up after I've restored and reinstalled their table. The memories that they have of playing on that table as a kid are rekindled. Charged with a renewed enthusiasm for the game, they have a sense of satisfaction and a deeper appreciation for the craftsmanship of a bygone era. 
and they have a connection with those who played those games collectively known as billiards that transcend time. I'm Doug Giles. Thank you for, thank you for watching.